everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today I want to talk to you about Holo ISO. And if you see me dress exactly the same as yesterday, it's because I'm recording this video <laughs> back to back with the, la with the one I um, published yesterday. And it's because I have too many ideas now and I don't want to forget them. So after the video I made about the budget PC, and this is the PC that keeps you know giving it, this is a great pc it's not only cheap or on a budget but it's a continue giving me ideas and the reason is that that pc uh, on my spanish channel i published my my uh budget version the same but in spanish and somebody uh told me hey angelo it would be great if you tested the whole iso on that pc because you know is the build is with an amd card also but you're the what the hell are you talking about, Angelo? What is Holo ISO? Well, Holo ISO is basically a modified version of the uh, ISO from SteamOS that will allow you to install SteamOS basically on any PC. So when he told that to me, I was quite intrigued because, as you know, well, the PC had a limitation in terms of CPU. It behaved quite well, but well, there were CPU limitations. And knowing that the SteamOS run on Linux and knowing that Linux is more efficient in, uh, in that sense than Windows, I was intrigued by the idea. And um, another good thing is that because we built it with an RX 5600 XT, then that ISO will have no problem because they just say the Holo ISO doesn't like NVIDIA that much. So if you, if you try this on an NVIDIA card, you may run into a lot of problems and the team behind Holo ISO, let's say they don't support it. Okay. So this, the, this machine was perfect for the testing um, of this um, ISO. So basically to install it, you just uh, download the ISO and burn it into a USB using Rufus, Rufus if you have Windows. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what the software is for Linux and <laughs> Mac OS, but what you probably guys are more intelligent than me and know what software to use. So once that is burned, then all you have to do is boot your new PC with that USB in, and then you just have to install it. You basically press a button, answer a couple of questions, put a couple of passwords, and there it goes. It's all installing, and that's it. Once it's installed, it will restart the machine, reboot the machine, and it will get into basically the same thing that you will see if you're starting your Steam Deck for the first time. So it's going to do some updates, some things, and then it's going to ask you to uh, put your Steam uh, account. Once that is done, well, with the Steam um, interface that we know is going to start. From there, you can do anything you can do within SteamOS on a Steam Deck. If you have seen it, if you have a Steam Deck, you know what I'm talking about. If you have seen videos, you know what I'm talking about. I just plugged in, for example, like a, a little uh, Bluetooth dongle and it was recognized immediately. I didn't have to do anything. I just went to Bluetooth and I added my Xbox controller. Obviously, I'm missing some of the tactile functions. So you have some combinations, for example, to bring the right side panel of the Steam to where all the details for uh, performance and stuff like that are. So you, you have basically everything you have on the Steam here on your PC. So what is good and what is bad and why why this uh, is a user? Well, as you know, I, I talked a little bit ago about, a con well, I don't know if I brought that to this channel, to be honest, but I'm working on a consoleized PC, which means that I want a PC that is simple to use, where Windows is used as little as possible and everything you can do it, you can do it with a gamepad to make it as close as possible uh, to a console, okay? So right now, this project that is going around here is working on a window and windows and when you start the pc it starts with a steam os um interface but it's still on windows just that now steam has this interface available for you to launch on windows so it runs and it's like you are on a steam os but evidently you are running windows so the important part here is that uh, this makes your life easier if you are only interested in running games, especially if those games are on Steam, because the problem comes when you want to install, and this is true for uh, uh, a Steam Deck, a Steam OS, and also for Windows when you're using the interface. If you want to install games from other launchers, because basically you have to leave the launcher and then you will need a mouse and a keyboard to do all of that. The same happens on Steam Deck. The difference is that um, Steam OS is harder because it's not officially supported on Windows. It's just annoying, but you can do it and then you can add it to your Windows install uh, Steam installation as a known uh, Steam application and you will have the game there. It's an extra step and there are things 
things like play night to try to make things easier, but they are still far from perfect. But in any case, my interest was more about performance. Will I get more performance out of these on some of the games? I didn't test a hundred games, I only tested the three ones that gave me some issues when we were originally testing the system on Windows. And these three games were Cyberpunk, Horizon Zero Dawn and Spider-Man. And unfortunately, I had to say my experience was not good. The OS works very good and I have all, and because I have a Steam Deck, I know the OS very well. I know I can go to desktop mode and use it as a computer, go to YouTube, use programs, and install a lot of things and be happy and use it in many, many different ways. Install any deck, which is amazing. And so I know how it works and there are many easy things that I can do. But then when I started playing trip, these triple A games that gave me problems, they didn't behave better than on Windows, not even equal. They were a lot worse running on these systems than they were on Windows. And so this brings the question, so what's the point? If, you know, why would I use a Steam OS for anything if the performance is worse? Um, yeah, for, and for nothing, I wouldn't. Um, because there is no point because I can have the same interface without you know the some of the benefits that is having information FPS and other things available and some other shortcuts but other than that I basically can have the same interface on Windows and take full advantage of the resources of my computer and not be limited to be AMD in this case I can use Nvidia car and I will still get more frames per day yes I know there are some Linux games that, you know, they are mm, going to be, behave probably better because they are properly Linux made uh, games or equal, but this is not the norm. They are the exception. There is only a few of them. Okay, so what, what, why will I lose performance, especially if you are on a budget PC where <laughs> each gram, each frame counts. So, yeah, it's, it's a hard situation because... um. I like the idea of not depending on Microsoft and having an alternative, but unfortunately that's still very far from it. However, I want to say not everything is lost. I think there is a couple of nice things and uh, use cases for a Steam OS on, uh, on a PC. One, the first one is and you don't want to, um, you know, pay for a Windows license and you don't care too much about losing some performance. Um, Depending on the game, it could be a lot, but you know, if, even so, you are not going to play AAA games and you're not interested. You just want, you know, a PC that you can use to very light game, indie games, and stuff like that. And at the same time, something to just go browsing around and so on because you have this very low power computer and you think this will be a good case use. And I think that will be a, use, a very good use case. Um, because you don't have to pay for Windows and this, uh, this SteamOS will let you do anything that you can do with a normal PC which is, you know, uh, use LibreOffice, you use YouTube, browsing, email and play some games evidently. The other thing I think, the, the other thing I think this will be very good for is for like a retro emulation machine because this SteamOS will make things so much easier because of EmuDeck. EmuDeck as you know is a project that came out that basically does everything for you in setting up emulation and basically all you have to do is drop the ROMs and BIOS of each system you are willing to emulate in the proper folders and that's it once that's done basically you can run anything and it makes the process so easy that i will say that sometimes i find that it's better to to use this than for example bato and um, um, i know bato is more specialized if i don't remember wrong for emulation and stuff like that but i think the advantage of steam os in this case is the fact that they are always adding new functions and it allows you also to have this nice interface to run the Linux games already basically automatically without you having to worry about what version of Proton or so on you need to install. So that's a plus. So if you are not, you know, going to build like a ultimate gaming machine with everything, but you want something like that can handle a little bit of everything, then it has a use case. But as the main OS for my computer, this is not something I want. And not even for my main gaming computer, because I think there is still a lot of rock edges here. And that's understandable, because at the end of the day, they have to translate many of the Windows game using a ledger, like it's Wine or Proton, to be able to, you know, run the game. So it's a miracle they run at all, if you ask me. I think this is a, one of the biggest engineering achievements in terms of software and compatibility that you can see. But, you know, we, we want our performance. We want our GPUs and CPUs to perform as 
best as they can. And if that means having to use window, well, that will be the reason we are using it. However, uh, from my point of view, this is an interesting curiosity, something that it could, you know, spark other conversations or go somewhere. Let's see where this goes. This is just a starting, and I think over time, things are going to get better and better. So it's good from my point of view to have an alter uh, alternative to Windows that will uh, run games and so on. It's not the most performance alternative at the moment, but I think over time things will change. Um, well, who knows, you know, um, we, we may see things going very, very good. So this is what I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you like this short video. It was just talking about my experience with the Holoizer. Um, well, you know, hoping that things get better over time for the moment for to me it's not worth it at least not for the sort of application i'm using it as i said there are other situations where this may come very handy like one of those mini pcs with the uh, apu integrated however this is one question and i close the video if you install are they going to behave as good as in windows because depending on what you're trying to achieve you know you, you may still want to use windows just to get that extra performance so Let's see. Let's see how it goes. However, I hope you like this video and as always, see you on the next one.